Owe Sheeran is a partner at OMA. He's the head of the, uh, both the Asia office for OMA and specifically the Beijing office where he's based. He um, has been instrumental in designing and delivering the seminal CCTV building uh, in, in Beijing. And I'm quite sure that uh, his presentation today is going to tell us quite a bit about that uh, very important building. So could I ask you to welcome Oli Sheeran to the podium. challenging the preconceptions of the high-rise typology and uh, instead of giving a very uh, broad uh, overview I indeed want to focus mainly uh, on presenting one particular project um, that we've been working on now for the uh, past six years um, but obviously want to enter the subject uh, really through maybe uh, two buildings that have ultimately determined at this point it seems the fate of architecture. Um, the Empire State uh, may be still the most emblematic uh, skyscraper in the world and may be still the most important needle. Um, a building um, that is clearly um, defined and determined verticality and the dominance uh, of height as its ultimate goal um, and uh, that has uh, in, in a way made a whole uh, typology subject to eyeing uh, tabulation uh, of the superlative as confirmation of its own importance. Um, and this, uh, in, a, in a kind of slightly ironic uh, um, situation where um, a typology that defines um, a very, print, a, a very uh, simplistic principle of hierarchy in which the top is the best and the bottom the worst, yet what it offers typically is the least amount of the best since the needle by definition gets smaller and smaller towards the top. A building now um, that probably um, not only this entire conference uh, but maybe almost the entire attention of the world is uh, committed to um, could possibly be uh, the most successful uh, endpoint um, of this typology. Uh, as the, the building is about to grow out of the, the picture frame and possibly it will be too tall to be ever photographed in one piece, um, it might uh, clearly exemplify um, that indeed possibly the top uh, has been reached. The other building um, that possibly mo was most significant uh, in the past decade uh, for architecture is this one. A building whose contents uh, no longer matter, a building whose image uh, has almost literally molded down uh, architecture's physical properties and eternally cast them in the desire for iconography. So today, basically, um, if we are talking about a skyscraper, we are uh, inevitably uh, confronted with a desire to be the tallest and the most uh, iconographic. But if we look at this uh, iconography and expression through um, voluptuous curves um, uh, closer to uh, cosmetic surgery than architecture, and if we marry the two uh, typologies together, we know uh, approximately the results and we know how possibly um, the entire world uh, could look like. But the question remains if uh, that uh, is the future. In 2002, we were uh, invited, OMA was invited to participate in two competitions. Uh, one was for the reconstruction of uh, then uh, still one of the tallest buildings in the world. Uh, the disappeared, tragically uh, disappeared uh, World Trade Center in New York. The other one, um, a, a kind of uh, almost uh, uh, impossible to imagine project in China, um, a television station for the, for the national broadcaster. And we chose for the context that would um, possibly allow us most uh, successfully to extract ourselves uh, from the obvious uh, expectations uh, uh, in terms
terms of this uh, typology. We wanted to think of a building that was not about height, a skyscraper um, that would not try to dominate uh, the, the tabulation uh, through its extreme uh, by being tallest, but that would uh, uh, search for a set of different qualities and a different sense of identity um, in the context uh, of the whole. And it was a project that would be ultimately located in uh, an urban context, in a very specific urban context in Beijing, uh, a city with uh, a huge amount of history, yet uh, one of the cities uh, transforming the most dramatic and the most rapid uh, in the world. And in a part of the city, the central business district called out by Beijing city planners as the playground for uh, future um, presence. And ultimately, uh, an image presented to us uh, a forest of 300 skyscrapers that very clearly posed uh, the question of what this typology um, could ultimately be. But it was not only a specific uh, urban context, it was also a very specific historic context. Um, for the first time um, in history, uh, Asia uh, had more skyscrapers than the West, so it had adopted a typology that was ultimately invented uh, in the West as its own triumphant sy symbol of modernization. Yet, uh, if we look at the role that uh, the West was playing at this point in time vis-a-vis -vis this typology, there was very, uh, there was very little, man any, any manifesto, any theoretical piece of work on the skyscraper had essentially stopped a quarter of a century uh, early. And it seemed that um, the desire to construct and the desire to develop had entirely uh, overtaken uh, the responsibility to think. We wanted to design a building that would re-engage space, city space, urban space, that would not like the needle occupy a particular piece of land and ultimately absorb uh, the city space in its own uh, self-referential position, but that would be able um, to put itself in a much stronger relation to its surroundings and not um, occupy in its chimney-like uh, character, suck in uh, everything that happens on the ground, but ultimately in a way project back into the city um, uh, a sense of space and possibly uh, a sense of uh, community. The organizational principle of this building is a loop. Um, a loop that very strongly forms a counterpoint to the line. The line, the verticality, um, as we said, with uh, a sense of a top and bottom and the better and the worse, um, but the loop uh, as a principle of a non-hierarchical uh, uh, system, one that has no beginning, no end, and in that sense almost no up and down anymore, and the sense that a building could not only symbolically express um, this idea of non-hierarchy, uh, but also ultimately translate it into its inner functions and its inner makings and the way that a building uh, would be uh, occupied the way it would be used and the way its inhabitants uh, would understand their own role as part of a larger whole. The loop uh, obviously has a technical uh, resonance. As a circuit, uh, it connects strongly to the needs of broadcasting, but also to other systems such as building services and certainly um, started to define a primary circulation principle that again would exploit um, this, this character of the circuit and connect all pieces, uh, all functions in the building to each other, always able to choose your way, to go a longer or a shorter way and pass by uh, uh, other, uh, other particles of the building. But it also um, assembles um, this building as uh, the national broadcaster, uh, as a TV station, assembles all aspects of television making in this one single structure. So for the first time in history, uh, a TV station uh, would be built from scratch. Uh, everything new, not like typically at this point in time, media organizations exist, grow over time, and add pieces to an already existing uh, campus-like arrangement, but really the possibility to rethink um, uh, the, the properties of the media
media maker uh, in its entirety. And the vision of the building really became to connect all those pieces, administration, news, broadcasting, program production, research and training, in this loop of interconnected activities, a system in which we said the brains know what the hands are doing and vice versa. In other words, a system that would really proclaim um, exchange and collaboration um, rather than uh, hierarchy and uh, disconnect. The continuity of the loop also translated uh, in its structural system. The engineers of Arab um, uh, developed with us uh, a concept that in a way is, is really, I think, closest to, to the idea of the building uh, that it could have ever been. It's a, a true hybrid between architecture and engineering in the sense that even the structural system ultimately functions like a loop, uses the continuity of the building to declare it a tube folded in space. Um, all outer surfaces of the building are wrapped in a, a steel uh, diagrid mesh um, that carry the forces uh, down into the ground. And indeed, um, the process of engineering, um, not only computational, but also in physical terms, this is a, a 1 to 30 scale model uh, weighing 64 tons um, that was tested on a hydraulic platform uh, in China, specifically built for this project to verify its uh, physical behavior uh, based on the computational um, analysis. And the building indeed, uh, its vision, um, the way it would uh, break down the large form uh, of the building into a fractal pattern introduced through the structural system, but ultimately a building that would not only announce its own stability, uh, but rather its instability in different perspectives, different conditions, and that would uh, appear um, sometimes present and sometimes uh, ephemeral. But the building is by no means a typical building. It's a highly specific building, maybe one that one could best describe as an organism. It's not a generic building. It's not a building built for the hypothesis of occupation, but for a very specific user. If you take the building apart, and this really explodes um, all the specific uh, technical uh, spaces inside the structure, you can see that it really almost reminds um, of uh, of a, a fully technical uh, installation on one hand, and as you start to assemble bits and pieces of those, you can identify clusters, um, a broadcasting cluster, a news cluster, and a program production cluster. And all these technical systems are then interspersed and intertwined with a series of communal and social systems. Uh, meeting rooms, canteens, lounges, chat areas, and their own circulation so that both systems hand in hand would declare the building a building for inhabitation and exchange uh, uh, and not only uh, technical production. And if you look at this image, it really, um, you could uh, think of it as an x-ray uh, of the project um, that really shows a series of organs and circulatory systems um, that uh, uh, kind of reference almost biological uh, images we all know from our school books. Two systems, two circulatory systems, are then um, cut uh, into the main uh, meat of the building. Uh, the main staff circulation, visible here in blue, um, that connects not only all technical, but yet again also all communal spaces in the building and allow people to freely circulate um, and experience uh, uh, the structure, but also really congregate uh, and exchange uh, uh, within uh, the building. But yet it is paralleled by a second system. We cut a public circulation into the building. And although the building is primarily, um, or let's say entirely uh, dedicated to the television making uh, process, we discussed with our client the importance um, of media for society and of this building uh, potentially for the city. We suggested to let for the, possibly for the first time in history, the public enter the entire process of media making and experience uh, media making through what we call the visitor's loop, a dedicated trajectory uh, that almost like a double helix intertwined with the staff circulation um, cuts through the entire structure 
and reveals uh, processes of media making, uh, representation, the studio spaces, uh, broadcast control rooms, um, to render comprehensive um, the inner makings of a building, but obviously also to explore the architectural features such as um, the lowest floor of the overhang, which projects out 70 meters in 162 meters height in a viewing deck and a platform that gives uh, panoramic views uh, across the city, but also has a series of circular glass floors in which you can enjoy the most specific uh, quality maybe of this building, pure vertigo of 162 meters uh, below you. But beyond the building, um, I think we, we carry a responsibility um, to not only engineer the structure itself, but also think of the way in which it ultimately will connect to the city fabric. The site uh, of a, a significant scale of 20 hectares uh, in the middle uh, of the city, um, we started to, to take in a way as seriously as the building and uh, investigate it as a, a, a small scale texture that would relate the large scale of the buildings to the scale of the street and the scale of the people, a kind of uh, um, amalgamation of uh, uh, green and park areas with outdoor activities, um, with built uh, uh, parts and particles, and with an outdoor uh, entertainment and uh, experience possibility as a, as a place that could also uh, hold larger congregations of people and really through events um, manifest uh, a different sense of presence of architecture uh, within the city. The building itself um, is occupied by 10,000 people and visited by several thousand daily and the diversity of those people, the, the amount uh, might declare the building in itself a collective uh, in its own right, a sense that the diversity of its occupants and um, the intensity of the life um, maybe becomes one of the most defining aspects of, uh, of the project. And uh, um, two years ago, I started to work with the Museum of Modern Art uh, in New York on two exhibitions, one in Beijing and one in New York, to really, um, if you want, explore um, uh, further the ambitions and uh, explain further um, uh, the conditions uh, of the building that we had designed and we started to, to present the building no longer as a piece of engineering but actually as a, as a series of experiences. We defined uh, five characters, um, an office worker, a control room uh, uh, assistant, uh, a director, a VIP and a tourist uh, and basically tracked their paths through the different spaces of the building. We also designed um, all 5,000 interior spaces um, of this building and really tracked their life and their, their, their experience through the building, saw where they would intersect, where the building in itself becomes a stage for social interaction and really uh, to start to think of architecture no longer only in spatial um, or uh, engineering terms, but ultimately also think of uh, sustainability not only in terms of technical performance, but also in terms of a social responsibility. Already before the construction started, the building uh, took on its own life in the city. It started to appear on billboards of uh, other developers, sometimes large, uh, sometimes tiny, you can see it here in the corner, uh, sometimes dwarfed by a building that is only one-fifth uh, of the height. Um, sometimes uh, with the clear declaration of increased value by pure proximity uh, to the structure. Um, but since construction started uh, in September 2004 and the client had uh, mentioned to us it would be a tiny event hardly worthwhile attending, uh, which turned out to be a huge party, uh, the building started to grow and, and take its, uh, if you like, uh, odd or specific position uh, in the city and only really since the towers started to emerge um, and the building started to grow you could feel uh, a sense of what this building was doing to the city as a whole and this was um, about five, four months ago uh, end of uh, last year um, shortly the two towers had grown to their tallest point and were about to grow uh, closer to each other and approach the moment of connection 
and the rumor had started to circulate in Beijing and the bars and the streets and the bus stops. People were talking about the fact that uh, possibly you could only, they, they had heard that you could only connect the two towers at one particular hour of the day and that would be between 5 and 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, and the interesting part uh, of that maybe was not um, that the rumor was actually true and uh, our engineers could give uh, uh, greater uh, justice to, this, to the fact that um, the two towers had to be um, at equal temperature at the moment of connecting, so the sun had to be absent uh, for the maximum period of time, so no differential and torsional heat stresses would be locked uh, into the system uh, the moment of connection. But what was actually interesting about it was the fact that it had started to uh, occupy people's minds, that it had uh, started to capture uh, people's attention and in a way polarize a debate uh, about the moment that then happened uh, on December 8, um, when the two towers finally uh, came closer and connected uh, in the early morning hour. Um, and the, the headline in Beijing news was that uh, the towers kiss. Since then, um, the project uh, really, and, and it's maybe only um, since, since it has grown together that uh, it has become apparent how different uh, the building is in itself um, uh, beyond uh, the entire uh, proclaimed ambition that we had defined, but how different the building is and what kind of uh, a strongly contextual and spatial role um, it has started to take uh, in the city a city with its own uh, strong presence and the building with its own moments of uh, stability and instability as it inscribes itself um, into the city fabric. Um, and uh, I think also uh, what, what is very interesting is that the building starts suddenly to act um, not necessarily as a component of a skyline um, but really defines a sense of urban depth um, it starts to work with a foreground and background. It in itself is its own foreground to its background since one portion of the building always sits behind the other, is angled in a different way and the fractal uh, uh, light uh, effects um, keep it in a strange sort of imbalance. There are moments of uh, enormous scale and enormous strength uh, and this is a picture only taken a few days ago. Uh, we're about to complete the steel structure on the building um, but again, uh, you can see how from uh, enormity of scale, it suddenly almost disappears uh, in the context of the city and makes it sm itself small and compact. And I think uh, this sense of ambiguity uh, in the project, the sense of uh, dominance, but also maybe in, in certain ways fragility uh, or humbleness, um, are maybe what makes it uh, an incredibly uh, tolerable uh, and likable part uh, in the end of the city. And uh, it really has become, um, through its own uh, existence already, part of the life of a city uh, that no longer sees it as pure architecture, but almost uh, as one of its inhabitants. Thank you.